Hey designers, welcome to this step-by-step -step tutorial where we're going to create a parallax animation in After Effects. We're using a background image and a separate layer for a GPNG to create that subtle illusion of depth and movement. We'll begin by working in Photoshop. First, let's get started by matching the colors of the Jeep layer to the background. Select your Jeep layer and go to Image Adjustments Match Color. In the source, choose the document name, which will be the name of your current project. Then, in the layer option, select the background layer. Now, let's fine-tune the match by adjusting the luminance, color intensity, and fade sliders until you're happy with how the Jeep blends with the background. Once you're satisfied with the result, press OK and save your file. Now, open After Effects and create a new composition. Import the Photoshop file you just saved, making sure to import it as composition, retain layer sizes. Double click on the composition to open it. Next, select the Jeep layer and make it 3D. Press P to reveal the position settings. Click on the stopwatch next to position to add a keyframe. Move the timeline indicator to the last frame and adjust the Z position so that the Jeep moves slightly backward. We're going for a subtle movement here, nothing too drastic. Preview the animation. And once you're happy with the smoothness of the motion, we can move on. Now, go back to the main composition and drag your Jeep precomposed layer into it. We're going to add some camera movement to enhance the parallax effect. First, create a new camera layer. Then, make the Jeep precomposed layer 3D as well. Select the camera layer and press P to bring up the position settings. Once again, click on the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Move the timeline indicator to the last frame, and this time adjust the camera's Z position to move it slightly forward. Preview the whole animation once more, and you should now see that subtle depth created by the combination of the Jeep's and the camera's movements. Now, to add some more visual interest, select the Jeep Precomposed layer. Go to Effect Distort Optics Compensation. In the Optics Compensation settings, make sure to check the Reverse Lens Distortion option. Now, when you increase the field of view, you'll notice a stretch distortion effect being applied. Click on the stopwatch next to the field of view to create a keyframe then move the timeline indicator to the last frame. Increase the field of view value to your liking and preview the animation again to see how the distortion builds over time. Next, we'll add some finishing touches. Go to Layer New and create a new solid. Choose black for the color. We'll turn this solid layer into an adjustment layer by clicking the corresponding icon. This allows the effects we apply to affect all layers beneath it. Now, go to Effects and Presets and search for CC Vignette. Apply the CC Vignette to the adjustment layer and increase the amount to create that darkened edge effect. Once you've set it, preview the animation again to see how the vignette adds depth to the overall composition. The final step is to add some text. Grab the text tool and write the text you want. After typing, highlight the text, increase the size, and choose a font that fits the style you're going for. I'm using a broken, deteriorated font for a more dynamic look. To center the text, 
Go to Window Align and use the Align tools to position it perfectly in the composition. Adjust the scale as needed to fit the scene. Now, let's give the text some depth by adding a drop shadow. Go to Effects and Presets and search for Drop Shadow, then apply it to the text layer. Once you've fine-tuned the shadow settings, make the text layer 3D as well, and move it below the solid layer where we applied the vignette effect. Finally, to tie everything together, let's apply the optics compensation effect to the text as well. Go to Effect Distort Optics Compensation, enable Reverse Lens Distortion, and, just like before, click on the stopwatch next to the field of view. Move the bar indicator to the last frame, then increase the value to match the distortion effect we applied earlier. And that's it. Preview the full animation to see the final result. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give it a like, drop a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to Ace Designs for more creative content.